The debates and decisions that are shaping our continent now in Europeans. Walking through the mountains in Portugal's Vila de Rey, you may come across this obelisk, marking the geographical centre of the country. But it's been devastated by fires, which have laid waste to 85% of the forests, and the region's ageing population is also disappearing. The forest is difficult to maintain, as land is sausage-sliced into a patchwork of private holdings, often with absentee owners, and those who have stayed are too old to care for the trees. The local authorities powerless to intervene on private land, says the forestry management head for Villa de Rey. We need technicians, people who can sort out the land ownership and start replanting trees. We need labourers to clean up the risk zones. It's very urgent work because we face rapid erosion in the steepest areas. The local authority has appealed to private companies to regenerate the forests that were once the source of Villa de Rey's wealth and try and save the little that's left. These men work for a French company. But apart from the team leader, they're all from the Punjab in India. It's very difficult to find manpower here. Everyone's gone to the city where there's more work. So we offer training to these people who want to come and work here for a little money. Burnt wood only has any value as paper pulp, which companies like this one buy at knockdown prices. Most of the factory's production is, however, furniture. So now 40% of the raw materials come from Brazil or Chile. The boss is worried. If we have many more fires in the coming years, our survival could be seriously compromised. I have about 60 or 70 employees, but I might have to close down and liquidate. Among the workforce are two couples who came from Ukraine five years ago to pay for their children's studies. They even live in the factory, useful for overtime, which most Portuguese employees are unwilling to do, says the boss. It's a trade-off that suits the Ukrainians down to the ground. We live well. The boss built us this annex with gas, electricity, a bathroom, everything we need. We pay nothing, the boss picks up the tab, and all we need is to buy food. They understand us here, maybe because the Portuguese know what it's like to go and work abroad to earn money. They go to France, Spain or Britain, so they too have walked along the emigrant worker trail in the search for a better life. However, the two families have no intention of staying. They hope to return to Ukraine in a year, when their children will have finished university. Foreigners are welcome in Villa de Rey, but the municipality would like them to put down roots and save a community where 35% of the population is over 65, and there are only 17 people per square kilometer. Adelia has decided to stay, she arrived with four other families from her home of Maringa, Brazil, last May. It's the first stage in a program between the two municipalities to repopulate Villa de Rey. She now works in the town's only hotel. When she cuts through the final red tape, she'll realize her dream, opening a hairdressing salon. The vision we have of Portugal before coming is that we'll have all sorts of problems and racial prejudice, but it's the exact opposite. We're welcomed with open arms. In next to no time, I've set up with my family, we have a house, and we're very happy. In all, 14 Brazilians arrived in May. Nearly all of them work for this man, who owns two hotels and three restaurants locally. The manpower's very welcome, as the local youth doesn't like working weekends when his family business makes 70% of its money. The rural exodus is acting as a break on a sector of the economy that could reinvigorate the whole region, says Carlos Marthal.
In the tourism sector, we could employ many more people than we do now. There are plenty of opportunities to develop, so the authorities and government have to work to promote tourism in the interior as well as on the coast. Villa de Reis Mayor is the person who had the bright idea to repopulate by bringing over Brazilians. She says integration is easier when you speak the language and in terms of national immigration policy, she has an even more daring vision. It's a shame so many immigrants already here are still illegal. Most employers are scared to give them work and we need their labor. We need them here, inland, throughout Portugal, because if you add up all the illegals, there are still not enough to make up the labor shortfall. We should legalize those who are already here. Irene Barata is counting on bringing 150 new Brazilian families over in the next year. But her main political rival doesn't agree. This young lawyer has nothing against Brazilians, he says, but he would prefer encouraging locals who have left to return. Many people from our region and our country would be ready to come here to restore their parents and grandparents' old houses. Our commune would not be so run down if we offered them the same good conditions we're offering the Brazilians. Either we think about our cultural heritage or we don't defend it and we'll be absorbed by the very powerful Brazilian culture. Cecilia Fraga rejects this argument outright. She left a comfortable situation in Brazil for Villa de Reis, peace and quiet. Security is Europe's main advantage over Brazil, she says. Once a journalist, she now works as a secretary in a local business. She's just moved into a house with her two children and has no regrets. I have they are the reason she's here. My children will flourish in this environment. They have another language, another culture, another life to live that can only be a good thing for them. If one day they return to Brazil, they'll have a wealth of experience that can only give them a head start. So is Portugal the new El Dorado for immigrants? This is the gamble Villa de Rey is taking against the current European Union trend where member states are more likely to raise, not lower, barriers for migrants.